Well, as we come to communion today, I wanted to open up uh, with the scripture, Luke 17, a uh, rather unusual one for communion, uh, but I believe it fits for our time now, Luke 17, 11 through 16. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Now, I'm sure you notice uh, in, this, in this passage, uh, the words, at a distance. Uh, men were at a distance. has whole new meaning for us now. If we have a whole understanding of what it means to be at a distance uh, have to be at a, at a distance with other people. Uh, I wanted to open up with this verse because it shows just that, and it shows even more that Jesus, um, he met them as people that were at a distance. You know, men that had leprosy, people that had leprosy uh, back then, it, they understood, they, people thought it was something that, that was contagious, that if you touched someone with leprosy, that you can get leprosy. It's a little uh, mis- misled, misunderstanding, but that's the thought of that day. And so they were kept at a des- distance. There were actual le- leopard, leper colonies uh, that people that had leprosy had, had to live in. And so it was a really big deal for Jesus uh, to not even see them. It says the text shows that Jesus saw them, but then he also spoke to them. Uh, that's a huge, I think that may have been even more more than the healing itself, that Jesus healed them of their leprosy, uh, but also the fact that he spoke to them, he looked at them. You, we, you know how we act whenever we see someone that's disabled in a certain way, or uh, maybe someone that has a dis- disformity. This, is a, this was a disease that caused members of your body to be disformed. And what do you say to somebody when you see, like, hey, how's it going? How's life treating you? Uh, most, so most people just looked away uh, and kept their distance but Jesus looked right at them, uh, and he spoke to them. Uh, he, he met many of their needs, uh, but big one was that he spoke to them, and he didn't keep himself at a distance. Uh, while today we're not saying, uh, I'm not trying to say today that we need to go out and just start hugging everybody, uh, but uh, I wanted for us to see today that Jesus, even in our times uh, where we need to be at a distance, he draws near to us. We might be having be distanced from each other physically, but God draws near to us. And it says, I love at the very end, the uh, very last thing I mentioned was that it was a Samaritan. The Samaritan came back uh, to thank him. He was the only one that came back. And Samaritans back then were, were the, the greatest enemies, the most hated people by the Jews. Jesus was a Jew. And he showed that he didn't have a problem with them. And that even, even, the, even a Samaritan he healed and drew, and drew near to. And you might be thinking today, I'm, I, I'm an enemy of God. I, you know, I've done so much against God, I don't, I don't think he could ever even look my way. Uh, but we see Jesus looked at him. He looked at this Samaritan uh, that was an enemy uh, of, of the Jews. And so even the, the greatest enemy, God wants you. He wants, he wants to change your life. He wants to heal you uh, and bring you near to him. So what does this have to do with communion? Well, we know Jesus, he, he went through every temptation, uh, as Hebrews explains. Every, every temptation he had faced and overcome and was without sin. Uh, and he understood what it meant to be human uh, as, our, as our Messiah, as our, uh, our intercessor. Well, he also intentionally put himself at a distance. Uh, and I think he had a special heart for people like, like lepers or um, people that were outcasts of society. Because I think when he was younger, he probably got picked on a little bit as a kid. And, I mean, just think about it. He was perfect. He, he was sinless. 
And so he was probably a, little, a lot different than everybody else. And so he kind of got pushed away. So I think he had a special heart for people like this. Uh, but even more so on the cross. We know he intentionally distanced himself. He, he prayed right in the garden of Gethsemane. Father, do not take, if, if anything, uh, may this, the cup of the Lord's wrath not be poured on me. And it wasn't that he wouldn't go to the cross. Uh, it, but it was that he wouldn't have to be separated from his father. And that's what he did. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He went through intentional distancing. He went to completely distance himself from his father because he had to bear our sin. And he went from complete tightness, closeness to the father to complete separation from him and nearness to sin as he had to take upon our sin in the darkest hour anybody has ever gone through. And so we look at that today. We, we, we remember that he did that for us so that we won't be distanced from God uh, for eternity, that we can be near to God, closer to him than we could ever imagine for eternity because of the price that he paid on the cross. We remember what he did today. And so uh, as we do take communion together now, a uh, few, few instructions if you weren't with us last week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead, I'll pray, and then uh, we'll have a time of silence, maybe 30 seconds or so, where that will give you time to go get, the commun- go get communion uh, together and, and, and be able to hold the, the bread and the cup together. And then I'll have the words of institution, and then we'll all partake together uh, the bread and then the cup. So let's pray together. God, we do thank you for your son, Jesus, who came uh, and died for our sins so that we can be near to you. Thank you for this time that we can remember what he had done for us, that he distanced himself with you, the Father, uh, so that we can draw near to you now. And I pray that that, that's, that happens right now as we're in our homes, uh, wherever we are. Maybe we're, some of us are just in our cars watching on our phone. Wherever we are, we pray, God, that all of us can draw near to you because of the price that you that Jesus paid on the cross his blood that was shed for our sins we thank you for this time and may we be joined together in unity in Jesus name amen well the apostle Paul said for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way he took the cup he said this is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink of it as often as you do this you remember me until I come, until the Lord comes. We, we remember him at this time. And we remember also that one day he is coming for his bride. Let's partake together.